So with all that done, finally, we can get back to this, looking at our environment. So this video is specifically to show anybody new or uh, you know you reloaded the program and you forgot how to go through all this, I guess, how to get it back to what we in our group is calling um, the, the way, not the proper way, not the best way, but the way we're looking at it, okay? Other people will disagree with that, that's fine. We just wanna have some way that everything's set up. So if anybody's having some problems, we need to troubleshoot something. Um, if I may say, you know, go over here to the left or go to the right or go down here to look at this, you know, or in this mode, you should be seeing this. I wanna make sure that we're all seeing the same thing, okay? So a couple things right off the get go. Um, right up here is your notification. So if you click it, you'll get your notification center. Right here is the one that's pretty important. This is your job status. It's just saying that currently we're online or not online. You should be able to toggle this off and on and it goes right back online. If it doesn't, that will be the topic of some kind of later video um, on how to deal with fusion breaking because there's a you know, there's a couple things that it does and a couple of different few different ways to, to get it to be worked out later. Then, um, you know, help is help, so there's that. But the main thing is this right here. So under your profile name, you will see your preferences. You can go online, you can see the, there's actually an online component to Fusion. If you wanna take a look at that, maybe we'll do that in a video. I don't, I think I've been there twice. You know, it's not really of major importance to me usually. What we wanna do is we want to go to, um, by the way, I think that's actually under the Autodesk account. Anyways, whatever. We want to go to preferences so we can change some of what's happening here. Before we do that, though, I just want to point out a couple things. Right now, we are not in our sketch environment, which is our 2D work world. We're in 3D mode. Um, we're seeing a grid. We see a cube up here. If you hover over the cube, you can get the different faces. As soon as you hover over it, you'll get that little house up there, which will kind of you know orient you in different programs. We'd say isometric view over here is your different uh, uh, work areas, if you want to call them that. What do they call them? In, uh, work benches in Katia. Anyways, uh, so you have all these different places you could go, and every one of these that you click on will end up with a whole nother set of tools. We're gonna change this also in a second because lately I've been preferring the new user interface that they have, but that's under preview. Again, a conversation coming up. Now, if you like to have this big work environment, which is probably a good thing, uh, then you leave it like this. But if you want to see your data panel, you open this up and then you'll see this. So this is gonna be a big uh, topic of conversation as well. What do you put in here? And more uh, importantly, how do you organize this? You gotta keep this organized right off the bat, otherwise it's gonna turn into a mess. Uh, so if I wanna hide the data panel, I'll just go ahead and close that. Okay, now let's go over here to preferences and we wanna clean this up. So what I wanna do is I want to uh, change a couple things and probably I guess first and foremost is how it rotates. So if I, if I move, hold down my middle mouse wheel, which um, if you look at your, your, your mouse and you look at it like your left mouse button and your right mouse button and your middle mouse or the scroll wheel, if we just, I'll probably still say middle mouse, but it's kind of better if we say button one, two, and three from left to right. So that your left button is one, middle mouse is two, right is three, okay? So um, if I'm holding button number two down, I'm getting pan. If I hold down the left click button, number one, I get selection boxes. If I hold down the right button, number three, then I get this kind of mouse gestures thing that happens. And this this stuff okay now in order to actually do um, a rotate on here I have to hold down shift on the keyboard and then button number two middle mouse and I can get it to rotate around maybe for some people that's okay I come from many many years in Katia and I'm used to having everything on the mouse and I really wish it could be this way I wish they gave a preference fusion guys if you could add in a Katia preferences a uh, Katia uh, mouse uh, movement under preferences, that would be peachy. Anyways, um, we're stuck with having to hold the mouse, the hold down a keyboard button to do something. But the way I look at it is, 
What do I do most frequently? I'm zooming in. Oh, by the way, scroll wheel. Actually, scrolling it zooms in and out. Um, I'm used to, um, sorry, I don't want to say used to yet. I, I want to say I want to have all the most commonly used features on the mouse. So I'm rotating all the time. You're zooming in and out all the time. Panning, hmm, yeah, but not quite as much as the others. So I don't want my button number two middle mouse button to be the pan feature. So I'm going to change that. Okay, so that's one thing we're going after. Also, your default uh, orientation, your WCS, your world coordinate system, your origin, it is set up in what maybe some people would call plan view. Um, I we, we don't use it this way. We want to see it as it would be in 3D. So if I were to rotate, watch the cube there, I would want to have it to where my Z axis is pointed up, okay? Hopefully you guys understand your axes. Not now. Uh, so we'll go to preferences. And the first thing under general here you see is typical stuff, English, graphics drivers, okay. Default model orientation. Instead of Y up, Y up, we want to make Z up. Good. So there's that. And then down here under pan, orbit, and zoom shortcuts, instead of being fusion, uh, we've been changing it over to SolidWorks and then hit OK. You don't have to hit Apply ever. Um, and now it rotates with but button number two. Now I won't see Z up until I start a new document. So what I just did there, by the way, is you've got tabs. You could open up more and more, right, or close them. If you close one, there always has to be one there. So if I just close the only one that's open, immediately another one's showing up. Uh, and Z is pointing up now. So you gotta do that for that to happen. All right, so that is it for that part of it. Now the next thing I wanna do is I want to get rid of the grid in my 3D environment. I like this, I like it for teaching because I can see where people are at immediately. Um, on your own if you like it that way again that's fine but uh, for example if I go to make a sketch over here's how you create a sketch I pick this and I pick a plane and now I am in the 2d environment to make two-dimensional shapes like you know circles and such right so if I make a circle it's there now I can rotate the thing so I still am in 3d but the plane and the grid gives you an understanding that hey we're in 2d mode that's the way it's always been felt. So if I if I center this back, by the way, that's how you can do that. Now I'm back here and I could make more circles. When you're done, you stop the sketch, you leave, and now you're back in the 3D work environment. Now, if you keep the grid, sometimes for people it gets kind of confusing when they're new to know where they're at. So what we do is we come down here to your grid settings. And here we just say, get rid of the grid. Um, and this snap to grid, we want to get rid of that too. But let me show you what that does. If I go in here again to make a sketch and I pick a line or something like that, right? Now look carefully here. You see as I'm moving the thing around, see how it snaps to each one of those corners there? Um, they do this in a lot of the CAD programs. I have never liked it, so we go ahead and get rid of it. The, the problem with snapping to anything, the good is that it does. The good is maybe obvious, right? The bad is um, that it interferes with what you're trying to do. I want to put a dot, say, right on the right. Nope, can't get it right there. Oh, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. You know, I want to put it right in there. You know, I can keep zooming in until I get more grid numbers out to snap to, but this is getting kind of ridiculous, right? And on top of it, how many parts are you going to make in these common increments of what your grid is set up to? So typically, we come down here and we get rid of snap to grid. And now it's a lot smoother, I guess you'd say. And I could snap to wherever. I, I can click on wherever I want. It's not going to magnetically jump over to there. And the next thing is, let's say I wanted to extrude this. And all of this is the topics that are going to be in our probably our next video here. Um, see how I'm rotating, by the way? If I want to move this over to the center here, 
Um, now I can hold down control and I can pan it across. So I have my sketch and I want to extrude it up, but watch what's happening here. See how it goes 13, 14, 15, right? Now watch what happens if I zoom out. 5, 25, 30, 35, it goes in fives. If I zoom out even more, I wonder if it'll go in tens or whatever. 50, 75, now it's going in increments of 25. So you see, incrementally moving and maybe that's an okay thing. Don't like it, not good for here right now. Um, it's easier to just slide it to whatever shape and we typically just come over here and just write in the value. Again, we're not making parts that are 10 by 10, 30 by 30. They're 31.259 or something like that, right? So if I cancel this, you come back down here to your grid settings and that's what the incremental move is for. So you uncheck that and now when I go to extrude something, now it just moves freely, you see? So that's the thing we're gonna turn off also. So those are probably th the bigger ones, but what I do wanna point out is down here and would like to uncheck a couple other things. If you go to visual style, the one we wanna work on all the time is shaded with visible edges only. A lot of people when they start making parts, they find out that they can hit shaded and it makes the part look prettier, right? So you go here and that it's fine, right? But see how it takes the lines away? Uh, if we were to do something like a fillet here, you pick your edges, bring them in. You see how it looks a, a, a lot more realistic, I guess you'd say, right? Um, so it looks nice, right? And a lot of people that do YouTube videos and show things, they like to show it nice and pretty looking or definitely marketing videos. But when you're working on it, we wanna see the edges. I wanna know where those edges are. So we'll leave those on. Know where you make those changes though. They're under visual style and you can change them here. One thing we do do fairly frequently is we'll change over to wireframe so we can see what's going on inside uh, like maybe we put a, a hole down through the center and we wanted to see a feature inside there or possibly even a lot of times when we go over to the cam stuff and we're doing tool paths, I like to see what's going on in there. I'll turn it on to wireframe and, and then it'll let me see how an inside tool path is, you know, working its way down, I guess. So by default, make sure you keep it there. Now, as I did that though, you might've noticed, you see how there's a cute little shadow down here? Again, the shadow is nice, and I know a lot of people like it because uh, it makes it look cooler, but when we're designing things in 3D, we really don't have a floor. There isn't a floor, and if you're working on something like this the whole time, I feel that the shadow becomes really disturbing because it's like the shadow is somehow on the wall, so we're going to get rid of that as well. That's down here, and there's a bunch of different things you can check, but if you get rid of uh, the ground plane, and it'll automatically get rid of the ground shadow and reflection, then that's that's out of the way, okay? Then uh, anti-aliasing, we want, unless you got a really crappy computer, you probably wanna leave that on. Ambient occlusion is a thing we're gonna turn off, but I wanna show you what it does, because a lot of people don't know. So I'm gonna go onto this face here, I'm gonna make a sketch. By the way, I've kind of uh, figured that this first one is gonna be a little bit longer than the other videos, because there's, a, a fair amount of stuff to get into as we're doing this um, so that you understand how to move forward without running into any kind of snags with your interface. Now this will become a little bit, a little bit, oh dear God, it'll become a little bit more understandable if I make this, um, let's see, um, a little bit longer here. Okay, so I made a hole, I made a hole in the thing there, right? So now let's go here and I'll go to effects and I'll go to ambient occlusion. I turn it on and I turn it off. I turn it on and I turn it off. So do you see what's happening there? The ambient occlusion, occlusion meaning block, right? Uh, fancy word there. Uh, we want to occlude block all ambient light from getting into places that would typically be darker because there's no light there. So that's what that does. So if you turn on ambient occlusion, it can be a really nice thing if you're designing video games and you wanna have something realistic. But when I just want to see what's inside there, having that there makes it a little bit darker and we don't need it, so we'll get rid of it. 
All right, this is going to be kind of a tough one here. So what we're doing again with, you know, talking about things that we're going to turn off and on with the interface, in order to fully or at least to some degree explain this, we need to explain a topic that might be kind of a little bit more advanced or at least down the road. And even then you still might not feel like you get the reason why we're turning something on or off. This one has to do with a thing called a projection. What I'll do to at least basically get this across first is I'll, I'll go ahead and add in a new plane out here in space. A plane is an element that you can sketch on. Without a plane, you can't sketch. This is a flat surface, a planar flat surface. I can sketch on that. I can't sketch on a curve or a fillet, right? So I, I made a, a plane out here in space. Now I go to sketch. I pick this. Now if I want, I can project this. So I bring up the project, and I can get rid of the um, tips and, and such, right? If I go here, and if I turn this, you see I am actually on that plane over here out in space. And if I want, here I'll show you first, if I flatten this out, as I highlight over certain elements, they light up red. These will become a projection and they'll be purple. You know, recognize the line color is purple. But what I want to do is I want to, well, I want to pick this edge, but I'm going to turn it sideways so you can see what happens and see why they call it project. I'm projecting, you see that? I'm projecting that edge, now that entire face, that cylinder. It looks like a circle, but if you took this cylinder and smashed it out on this two-dimensional environment, it would be a circle, and so on and so forth, right? So if I were to pick just this edge right there and hit it, now I have a purple line on my plane. It's been projected. Now, the point of this is that it gives you something to use potentially as a reference to build off of, and much more importantly, this is linked to this object here. If I were to go back and change the shape of this, this would also change, okay? So without getting too much deeper into this, projections are a good thing and we use them all the time in various different ways. The thing that I want to say and the way that we want to use this in class to avoid any other complications is I want to be able to make a projection when I want to, but not anywhere automatically. Because the more automatic stuff happens, especially when you're beginning, the more problems we come uh, get into because there's so many more elements uh, involved now because this, uh, you know you may be picked on a face or touch the thing and a whole bunch of stuff happens that you didn't understand actually happened. So I'll go ahead and uh, get rid of this sketch. I'll get rid of that plane also. I'll try this again. So here's what the problem is. I go ahead and I say sketch and I want to sketch on this planar face, the flat face of that right there. And now if I zoom in and I start moving my mouse around, you see how it's already acting like the projection? It's highlighting everything. This is because there is an auto, there is a button checked, right? And so we have to go ahead and uncheck a button I want to show you something else before we do that. If I grab a line tool and I click, it'll snap right there, and I pick this, it'll snap right there. Convenient, but again, until we really got it down what we're doing, we don't want anything automatic really to happen. What just happened was it made this line be connected to that edge, that circle or part of the face, and this the same over here, and you can tell by this little constraint icon, which will be the topic of, for sure, another video down the road. Now, the uh, maybe not the problem, but a you know fact of this is that for whatever reason, when this one particular checkbox is checked, um, there was an, a, a projection made automatically as soon as we clicked on this face to go into sketch. And that's how we could snap to these lines. And for whatever reason, the programmers did not have it create a, a purple line for us to see. So it's stuck to this thing that it looks like, especially to a new person, hey, it's just stuck to that thing. But that thing has to be a link. This, this is actually a projection 
on our sketch plane linked to that other. So if I just wanted to have a line that was so long, maybe not connected there and it snapped, then suddenly out of nowhere, if you change the size of this, your line's gonna fall along. I don't know, I'm just dreaming up you know, things that might happen. So we wanna get rid of that function. And that is over here, you have to go to design. So as you're looking through this, think what are you doing? Is it general that it's gonna go with the whole entire system? Well, this is in 3D design. Is it in the cam stuff? No, okay, we'll go to design. There is this section right here, auto project geometry on active sketch plane. So active sketch plane, the, scan, the plane you click to go into sketch. It'll automatically project whatever you touched when you picked it to go into the sketch, da, 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 da. So hit okay and now it's good. And now we'll close this, we'll delete the sketch. We'll try it again. So now I hit sketch, I go to that surface. Now if I zoom in here and I grab the line tool, well, let's see, let's do it without the line tool. Things highlight like they did before, and this is gonna be kind of weird, but uh, it still happens, okay? But if I click now and I click here, do you see now that it's purple? So there's two different things happening that are really very similar. This one is now automatic projection of elements that you select. And then it does make a purple line and you can't really see it any better than that, but it does make a purple line there and that is in the same area above a little bit. Uh, allow, uh, oops, auto project edges on reference. So reference, you got close to it and then it'll automatically project him. So if I uncheck that, hit okay, stop the sketch, delete that, try it again, pick this face. Now I'm back in sketch, note the grid, hit the line tool, and now when I start hovering around, things don't snap. Uh, I, I understand that a lot of things, it feels good to snap to things because you think you're doing it right, because why would they have it snap if it was the wrong way to do it? But in our case right now, it's better to do it this way and then we can go about it the long way, which would be, let's say I did want to snap to this circle, but I did not want to snap, snap to that circle. I could hit, bring up my project window. I could select now that edge right there and say, I'm done. Now I have a projection right there. It also makes a nice center point, which is convenient. And then I can use it from there on. If I were to take my line tool, I would be able to snap to that, but it doesn't snap to that feature. So if I wanted to, I could zoom in and say, yeah, I want it to be right there, not right on the line and not have it constantly magnetically being snapped back to that if I didn't want to. There are more reasons why we are choosing to do this when we want to rather than automatically, which we will get to in a different video. All right, last thing, uh, I believe this is much longer than I wanted it to be. I have a strong tendency to make at least hour long videos that I've been trying to break that habit. It hasn't been working so well. So the last thing, I think we're pretty good and set up for the most part. There are more buttons that we check in there to turn off and on different things. But for now, we'll say that's good. As we're working through this, the big window is convenient, but I like people to really get used to seeing over on the side here where they're working and what they're working on. So when you first start up Fusion, it says my first project and it puts you inside of this project folder. All right, if I back up here, there is no back, back, back anymore. I'm now at the root, I'm at the top. These down here are just samples of things. This, well, right in here, is your projects. What you want to do for this series is you want to say new project and uh, how about we call it um, Fusion 360 Design Series. How about that? That seems like a good enough name. Uh, weirdness, by the way, if you click away, it doesn't seem to want to hold the name. Let me, let me see if that's still true. Liar. Okay, that does that is true when you go to rename it. But um, yeah, anyways, hit enter.
So we're going to make a, a name here called Fusion 3, uh, a, a project called Fusion 360 Design Series. And inside of that is where we're going to store all of our object. Inside of here, we are also going to keep it very controlled, contained, organized. So this one right here, how about we call it New Folder. Um, no, I don't want to call it Video 1. Um, Test 001. I'm not really even going to keep this part because this is just a, a vehicle to show you how to do preferences. But right now, I'm just showing you how to make folders. So I'm probably going to end up deleting this folder. As we go down the road, I will try to do my best to come up with good names or something to keep help keep everything organized. The thing we do not want to have is all the, you know, the piles of parts that we make loose right in here. If all the parts go with certain topics, we'll try to organize them as such. All right, so I make a new folder and, okay, go ahead and get into the folder. So now when you're looking up here, this is Fusion 360 project, I guess, folder that we're in. If I hit back right here, you won't go up one level from here. You'll go back all the way to the front, okay, back to the root. If I want to get back into my Fusion 360 main folder, you hit master, and then I'm there. Let me keep going with this for just a second. Get into the folder, then I make a new folder. Made a new folder. So now it's a folder inside of test 001. I get into that, there's test 001, and I'm in folder 002. If I make a new folder, uh, <laughs> 003, and I, I, I do that, I get into it, now I'm here. If I want to go up one level, then I just hit this, and now I'm back in two. Double click, go back into it. If I want to get to back to the master, the main project folder, you hit that. Now I'm back in Fusion 360. I can drill back down. Come on, you can do it. Okay, now I'm back here. If I want to get all the way back to the root right now, you just hit this, and now I'm back here. All right, that's how that works. Make sure you're working in the proper area. You can get in here and you can do some stuff like, um, you know, well, these things right here. If we actually save this part, we can move it to different areas, but it won't, you see right this, it, it won't let you move the folder here. So that could be a little bit of a problem if you really heinously, uh, you know, um, started saving these things all over, you're gonna have to spend a lot of time moving each individual part into the right folder. Okay, so I'm gonna delete that folder and the subs underneath that. Go away, yes. So that's gone under test 001. I'm gonna hit save, this is currently untitled. I hit save, it lets you know where we're at. So we're in Fusion 360 design series in the master in a folder called test 001. And I could call this part 001. Save, you give it a little bit. It takes a little bit to upload. You can still keep working, but if you look over here, it's uploading the file, so that's gonna take a bit of time. There we go, so that's done. I'm gonna go ahead and call that good right now. I think we've talked about enough to get our environment set up the way that's gonna be common to all of us, and it's gonna make some sense, I hope. And then later, as we go down the road, we'll make some more changes to different things. But uh, rather than do all that now, I think it'll make more sense to do it then when we have a better understanding of what its actual purpose is. I think the next videos to get onto will be, of course, probably basic, um, you know, sketch extrude type features. And I want to talk about the timeline down here and this tree up here, how to use these effectively. I think I'll make another video after that on just keyboard shortcuts, the, the typical keyboard shortcuts, and then maybe we'll do like little pickup videos every so often, you know, like, hey, by the way, did you know, now that we're into it a little bit more, you could do this with a keyboard shortcut too, all right? So uh, I will try to get those out as soon as possible. These ones don't take me terribly too long to make, but you know, busy, busy, busy all the time. So thanks everybody for watching. See you next video.